for a lot of people, uh, their first frustration is that they think that it's not normal for their kids to not like vegetables. There's actually a biological reason, you know, evolutionarily speaking, why kids don't like vegetables. At about the age of two, it peaks. So if you've got terrible twos at home and you're thinking, <laughs> oh, that's what it is. We know why. We know why, exactly. It's because back in the day, caveman times, that would be when uh, toddlers would crawl away, pick up a berry off a tree, taste it and could poison themselves. So the bitterness receptors are really, really strong. And so if you're trying to feed your kids something new, especially at that age, you can start to get really frustrated and then that can turn into a perpetual loop. It was actually a survival instinct that we had. Exactly, that kicked in. that's right. But it sticks around a bit too long. It does, <laughs> it, does. it does, yeah. And I which, think that part of- Which part is of... where your project comes in. Exactly, that's right. So I think that what we're trying to do is reframe the conversation and make it a lot more positive. So how, do you, how have you gone about reaching these kids? Because we do know they spend a lot of time on their devices. They do. And animation comes in very handy in that respect. Absolutely. And the best part is they spend a lot of time at school as well. <laughs> so uh, we're charging teachers with some fantastic resources. Uh, my background is in teaching. I was actually a dep head of department at a school. And my main role was to give resources to my teachers that they could use to, you know, fulfill their curriculum requirements. Yes. So what I've done is I've created resources that all teachers across Australia can use and it just so happens that they have vegetables inside, but it's English, history, math, science, there's some native vegetables in there as well. So you're kind of really getting a fantastic cross section of the curriculum and it just so happens to feature veg. Madison, you're the canary in the coal mine here. You're, <laughs> you're the one who can tell us whether all this sort of fancy schmancy stuff is actually going to work. Now, I mentioned that you like vegetables, but yes. is that sort of stuff going to persuade the kids that you've known who really hated their greens? I think there's so much in the program. I think it's going to be, it's just going to hint, just push them in the right direction. And I think <laughs> what, what's the hint that they need? I mean, what, what's the great fear or anxiety that, that you've been made aware of by, by people your age who don't like their vegetables? Lots of people think that when you have vegetables, it's not going to taste nice. You just eat them because you have to eat them. Yep. But the phenomenon shows that you eat them because you want to eat them because they can be delicious. And I think. And, uh, and you think, and you've spoken to your friends, and, and that, that approach works? I think so. To make kids think that they really need to eat vegetables? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Look, we've all done the techniques. I mean, this is age old and we even discussed it yesterday mm. about hiding vegetables, <laughs> about smothering vegetables, covering vegetables. Yep. Is that an okay approach still? I think that... The old, the old cauliflower in, you know, in gratin sauce. And cheese makes anything Cheese makes well. anything well. <laughs> Let's face it. Cheese it's, sauce. And as my yes. kids tell me, tomato sauce. Yes. <laughs> Put on Brussels sprouts, broccoli, beans. I makes it a whole lot better. It works. Yeah, yeah, it's it a good place to start. So if you take something unfamiliar and add it to something familiar, that's fantastic. Also, I think that for a lot of parents, they think that they need to add a, an adult-sized portion to their kids' plate. Yeah, that's tiny a good point. Tiny taste is a really good place to start. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That, that, that's good to remember, actually, in the size of a child's stomach. I've had to catch myself in that regard sometimes <laughs> thinking, well, you've got, you know, a whole head of broccoli there because I love it. Two little florets will do him. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. You, eat, you eat your veggies, Maddie. I think Mum's here who can probably... <laughs> yes. that. I do. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Mum's nodding. Done. Speaking of uh, vegetables... Yes. What do you got, what Alice? I have brought some ABC breakfast. That's a oh. perfect day. In Look fact, out. I reckon we call that a politically correct breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> ABC politically correct breakfast. That's a, that's a zucchini slice. It is a zucchini slice um, and it's a... Where's the knife? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I brought a knife along, oh, so okay. you can you can definitely taste some. Um, no and sharp objects. This is actually a dish that Maddie cooks on the show, but yeah. it's not a recipe on Phenomenon. It's yeah. actually an opportunity for English teachers to teach process writing. Right. You, you cook this. Explain Maddie. that to me. So that, that's fascinating. So this wow. is how the project works. So it's not a it's not a, a food segment. No. Okay. So tell me. So uh, in grade four, five, six. I'll take care of that, Alice. Oh, while you thanks, talk. Virginia. Right. Yep. You're trying to teach uh, kids that they need to be thinking about their audience when they write uh, yes. an English text. Yes. So in this case, Maddie is teaching Tuber Man, our alien tuberous friend, <laughs> oh, right, yeah. how to cook the zucchini slice. And what happens, yes. Maddie? Uh, well. Our instructions might not have been clear enough because he couldn't see. So <laughs> he, it, some things got lost in translation. Which is perfect for kids because they're so visual. And so if you can imagine, it's a five minute segment that teachers can show at the start of class as a bit of a hook. 
and then there are resources that go along with it, activities and writing tasks. Yes. Thank you. That just so happened to have. And then a, you and you end up with a, um, a recipe at the end of it. Yeah. Taste test time. Okay. Taste camera, test time. camera three. What's that? <laughs> there are enough pieces. This is the one. There are plenty. <laughs> this is similar to the one that I make. It's got some bacon. It's got zucchini. It's got egg. Mm -hmm. It's got tomatoes on the top. Mm. What are the herbs in there? Uh, no, no herbs in there. But uh -huh. I've uh, I've used a little bit of leek and mm -hmm. onion. And this is actually a Yum. recipe from mm. one of my favourite Melbourne chefs, Matt Wilkinson, and his wife Charlie Gibbs. So oh, right. this well, is my go-to recipe. Yeah, this is brilliant. It's yum. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a killjoy and raise the obvious problem mm -hmm. um, at my my school egg allergy, so mm. you can't have egg things turning mm -hmm. up. So mm -hmm. there's often those those issues to get around with veggies and kids at school too. Big yep. time, but yeah. that's that's the most exciting thing about right now. I think there's actually never been a better time to get around and, and find the gaps because yeah. we've got the internet. We've got so much information out there, yep. especially parents who have children with intolerances. Yep. Yep. They are on the front foot and they're always searching for new kind of recipes knowledge. And to try. It's and true. Knowledge. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Hey, and uh, Maddie. Yes. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> 15 today. Yes. Oh, fantastic. That was a great way to celebrate your birthday on yeah. national TV. Yes. <laughs> Being interviewed by someone who has a mouthful of food. <laughs> it's the most charming thing Delicious I've ever done. Delicious food. Absolutely. Food. I love it. You better leave this here, mm. Alice. All right. <laughs> she, can't, she can't object because she has a mouthful of food. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Madison, Alice, so nice to have you on the program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Come back and play some more.